Hello, and welcome back to Cello 101. Today we are starting book three of the Suzuki Method. Um, and we have a lot of cool stuff to cover. Um, let's go ahead and start with uh, the exercise right before uh, number one, Bersus. Should be on the second page. Or uh, page four, my apologies. Um, there is my timer. Um, so this one's kind of interesting. This is just a tonalization, which is helping set, um, help, helping you get the sounds of the instrument and where the key is going in your head um, so that you can kind of figure out how things are working. Um, now, looking at this at the beginning, uh, number one, we're playing uh, a half note is 30 BPM which is going to be very, very slow. My uh, metronome actually does not go that low. So um, we'll be running it at 60, but two beats per, so that it's basically the same thing. Um, our first line is going to be in C major. Um, there are two different fingerings to it. Um, there's the one written above, and then there's the one written below. We're going to run through both of them. Now, the second line is going to be in uh, doo -doo 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 -doo, three flats. So, um, that one is going to be slightly different. You are going to have B, E, and A flat. Um, so, you might want to go in and write your flats in just so you keep that in mind. Um, this would basically be the... the minor, if I'm remembering correctly, for what all is going on. Um, so, looking at that, let's go ahead and start with the first one. Um, it's... So, da, 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 da. So, it's going to be real slow. So, go ahead and join me. We're just going to play this with the fingerings that are on the top. So one, two. C major, C, E, G, C, D, E, D, C, G, A, G, E, C. Um, <laughs> uh, going through and naming the notes as you're playing them is, is not as easy as it looks. Um, and at the start, I almost played an E flat because I was worried about that second line and missing the flats. Um, so let's go ahead and do that one more time. Da. Da. Okay. Two. Three. through and play that same one but with the fingerings written underneath. This is going to be slightly different. We're going to be shifting out of first position. We did have a shift to third, fourth position there. Um, this one's going to be moving a lot more and there's going to be a lot more extensions. Um, so let's go ahead and try that one more time. Exact same line but running the fingerings on bottom. So two, three, four. Okay. 
So this really does go to show the differences between how your fingering affects how much you move. In the first one, we move once. In the second one, uh, we moved once as well. The place where we moved was different. In the first uh, way to go through and finger it, you had a lot more access to where you were normally used to your notes being. In the second one, you kind of bridged that really awkward string shift between the A and the D, um, and you could cover more of that, but playing regular notes at the bottom end of first position, you would have to shift back for. So let's go ahead and play that second fingering one more time. Definitely pay attention for intonation. And then let's go ahead and do that uh, one more time. So. Two, three, four. So, <clears throat> moving on to the second line, um, we are looking at the relative minor. Um, so C, E flat, G, C, D, E flat, D, C, G, A flat. I don't have that one marked, I'm going to do so. A flat, G, E flat, C. So, let's go ahead and do the first set of fingerings on this. sitting on my um, sitting on my music stand. So let's go ahead and try that one more time. Uh, you're going to be reaching back, definitely reaching back for those ones. Um, and then if you leave your hand to reach that low one while still staying in first position, um, it's not so much you're reaching back to hit it, it's more like you're pointing back towards your head. And my, at least for me, my elbow always kind of comes forward to help facilitate that. Um, different length fingers, different length radius and ulna, um, different length of your, uh, your upper arm bone, which I can't remember the name of at the moment. Um, all of those things are going to factor into how and where you need to position yourself to be able to make that reach. Um, if you are younger and you haven't finished growing yet, that's going to be an exceptionally difficult reach, and you might have to shift back and then forward um, to be able to hit. Um, as opposed to... tune on my tuner as well. So keep that in mind. Um, let's go ahead and play through that one more time and then we will go from there. <clears throat> actually a four on that G, not a two. Um, 
trying to pay attention to two different things at the same time. Kind of tricky. Let's go ahead and do that one more time. Um, except let's try the alternate fingerings underneath. So, um, it starts off the same in the first measure. The second measure moves to a 2-1, 2-1-2-3 uh, two, two, instead of a 4-2-2-3. Two, two, then it moves to a 2-1-2-3, exact same as on the top, and then a 2-1-4 instead of a 4-1-4. Four, four. Um, that is the, the setup that I was kind of stuck on. So, let's go ahead and try that alternate figuring. One, or, uh, three, and four. As you can see, this isn't the the problem of playing this. The technical side of playing this isn't the speed, isn't the um, isn't so much even the notes. Except for you do want to make sure that your notes are in tune. It is the thinking about playing the same notes, the same passage in a different way to accomplish moving your hand less and making it seem more more fluid and straightforward. Um, so let's go ahead and try that one more time with the alternate fingerings. Um, or with a, the second row of fingers, and then we can go from there. Three, and four, and... To example two, we are still in C major, cut time. Oh, uh, so it technically would be faster than this, my apologies. I like this slower pace just for really kind of sinking into the sound and figuring out what's going on. So let's go ahead and run uh, example two. Three, and, uh, standard fingering. Three, and four, and... transition between major and minor. It sounded wrong for a second until it clicked. Um, so there is no alternate fingering for this one. Let's go ahead and try that one more time. This is outlining the basic chord. Um, C major, C, E, G, C major, C, E, G, topping with a C, uh, G, E, C, and then G, E, C. Uh, apologies. <laughs> Super easy, super simple, uh, but also through two octaves it really rings through the instrument. So let's go ahead and try that one more time. One, or, uh, three, and four, and... So it'll be B flat, E flat, and A flat again. <clears throat> so second note will be flat. Uh, first note of the third measure will be flat. And then that should be it because we're not really playing anything else. So let's go ahead and do this. Um, there are no alternate fingerings, my apologies. And then you can go from there. So second line of the second example. Three and four and <laughs> Okay, 
Um, instead of a three uh, on the second note, it's a two. And instead of a regular one on the D string, it's a low one. Super simple. Let's go ahead and do that one more time, just to kind of get the feel of this. Three and four and... instrument so much fun okay moving forward um, we have some interesting stuff on the harmonic tonalizations now you've got the normal note that this string can play and then you've got a harmonic and then you've got second order harmonics which can also be hit and you've got thirds that are higher it's just hard to hit them Um, we are only dealing with first order harmonics on this. So we are playing a D on the A string. And then you could go to the D string, put your, hook your thumb around the heel of the neck, drop your third finger down. That'll put you in the rough, rough ballpark of where the harmonic is. And you're not pressing all the way down. You're just literally resting your finger on there and then bowing. What it's doing is instead of anchoring the string to the fingerboard to reduce the vibrating length, um, instead of vibrating from here to here, it's actually vibrating from here to here and from here to here on opposite sides at the same time. So that'd be your first order harmonic. Um, if you're having trouble finding it, the other thing that you can do... <laughs> For this harmonic, if you play the note without, or just touching the string without holding it down, and then you hold the string to the fingerboard, you know that you found it when the notes don't change. So, what this is showing us is fourth, fin fourth finger on the A string is the same as first harmonic. Um, second two measures are showing fourth finger on the D string is the same as third finger on the G harmonic. And then... So, um, this is a really handy way that you can actually tune your instrument just by ear, as long as you can get one string solidly in tune. shift point, but it's like a half step low. You can bounce between the first order of the string above and the second uh, second order of the string below, and then you'll be basically where you need to be. That is how you can, in fact, tune, as long as one, str one string is good, you can tune everything to that string. The only problem is harmonic, harmonic tuning like that is going to be a little bit off from what the uh, tuner actually reads. So if you're going to be playing with other people, highly recommend using a tuner. If you're just going to be playing by yourself or if you're just practicing, um, you just want to get some uh, working on a passage or that kind of a deal in and you're not dialing in on... Uh, making sure that your tone is absolutely pitch perfect, then you can use harmonic tuning and make sure that you're pretty close to the right ballpark. Um, anyway, so moving forward from here, let's go ahead and do that harmonic tonalization. 
Um, so it'll be fourth finger on the uh, fourth finger on the A string, just like it's written. And then that open, or so there's a three over a zero. That zero is an O, so it means three and open, not holding the finger down. So let's go ahead and try this. One and two and three and four and. so slow but um, let's go ahead and try that one more time super simple super sim uh, super straightforward however it does take some practice to figure out where those notes are um, for a very long time I never really used uh, stickers on my instrument but I did use pencil marks on where where those harmonics are um, that also kind of helps you figure out some other stuff when you're doing uh, shifted position work. Um, so let's try that one more time. Two, three, four. Last example before we get to some actual music is just octaves, super simple octaves. Um, that harmonic trick will come in on the last string. As you can see, there's a three over an open. Um, and then they have that also running on all the rest of the strings. The, uh, the, the last bar with that A is definitely the highest note that we have seen annotated so far. Um, but it's, it's literally just open note, play the harmonic. So C. Harmonic. G. Harmonic. D. Harmonic. A. Harmonic. So let's try that one more time. We'll keep that same tempo. It's it's not supposed to be any long drawn out thing. But go ahead and join me. One, two, three. forward from there, let's go ahead and take a look at Bersus. Um, nothing terribly out of the ordinary. There are some interesting alternate fingerings underneath. Um, if you would like to take those, you are more than welcome to. Uh, it is not required by any means. Whatever you feel is most... whatever you feel is most comfortable. Um, one of the nice things with the alternate fingerings on this one, though, is it does allow you to eliminate the use of an open string, which can be very handy. Um, I'm sure that you've noticed through the episode or through the uh, lessons and stuff that I occasionally catch um, a bit of a buzz on an open string. And when you're in the middle of performance, you really want it to be as polished as you can make it. So therefore, a lot of people opt towards using fingerings that don't necessitate open strings. Um, in passing, like, not a problem, but when it's, uh, well, that was a D, so it was false, or so it was already vibrating, but, as opposed to, uh, catches and it buzzes a little bit. Um, admittedly, it is possible, since the since the open string vibrates wider than a stopped note, um, you can also run into issues with it actually buzzing against your fingers that are down that you have to leave in position, um, because you're going from that note back to a stopped note, uh, which can be problematic. Um, so it's, it's a stylistic choice, it's also a personal choice. Um, if you do get into quartet, small ensemble, even onto orchestral and that kind of stuff, they'll usually have somebody designating fingerings. Um, in the orchestral symphonic sense, the uh, section lead 
will these are the fingerings that we are using uh, these are the bowings that we are using so that everybody is playing the exact same thing in the exact same way um just to make sure everything looks polished just to make sure that some people aren't shifting when other people aren't uh which kind of draws the eye of what's what's going on over there um so something to keep in mind so let's go ahead and listen to Bersus. Let me go ahead and change the... And then we are at four. Okay, so <clears throat> let's go ahead and take a look at this and then we will move forward from there. Looking at that, we have a bunch of interesting things going on. Um, let's go ahead and one, two, three, four. Let's break it down into four bar chunks. So, starting in measure one, everything's relatively straightforward. Um, let's go ahead and take it a little bit slower. Da, 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 da. Okay, so one, uh, let's go ahead and take that first four bars. One, two, three, four. <laughs> okay, now we also have the alternate fingering there. Let, let's take a look at the first one, for, or the, the first normal written in fingering first. And then at the end we can kind of go through and look at the alternate fingerings and then figure it out from there. So, um, yeah, first four measures, go ahead and join me, and we'll take the normal written in fingerings. the exact same thing as the first. Um, the eighth notes are slightly different, and there is one half note instead of two half notes in the last four measure chunk, but other than that, it's basically the same. Let's go ahead and play it. One, two, three. <laughs> Four bar phrase is going to be something slightly different. 
Um, there's only one alternative fingering. Um, okay. Um, just play the regular ones for now. One, two, three. section is going to be kind of close to the first. It'll actually be it'll actually be like the second time we played that section th uh, the first section through uh, with a whole note ending. So one, two, three. <laughs> Let's go ahead and do that one more time. One, two, three. Okay. Now we do have some alternate fingerings. Let's go ahead and play that first four bar or four measure chunk. Um, but we are going to play with the alternative fingerings written in underneath. So follow the top ones until there's ones on bottom. And it'll sound something like this one, or well, it'll sound the exact same in theory. Um, looking, it'll look a little bit different. So let's go ahead and try that. Go ahead and hop in with me and see if you can run the fingerings um, as since you since you know what it's supposed to sound like. Go ahead and see if you can jump in with me on the alternative fingerings and see if you can keep up. One, two, three. That's the first half of the song. Um, the the shift from does take a little bit of practice. It's kind of rough because you have to come down, have to come down on that uh, that A accurately. Takes a little bit of practice, but you can do it. And then it also subtly changes how it sounds because the original, as opposed to, also allows you to run a little bit of vibrato. Um, we haven't really covered that yet, but we'll get to it. Um, stylic, stylistic and mechanical choices can definitely influence how a piece sounds. Um, the other section that has a significant alternative fingering uh, is going to be the last four bar phrase before the repeat. So let's go ahead and take a look at that. Uh, we're going to be starting in a shifted position. Uh, I apologize. So we are going to be playing this all in a shifted position. Um, basically, we are using a first finger on the D string to simulate the A. Hey, they're in tune now. Um, so, let's go ahead and try that. So, you'll be playing third finger using the brand new Nifty Harmonic because it's a three over an open. Shifting back to fourth posi or first position, fourth finger uh, for the end of the alternative. So let's go ahead and do that uh, one more time. We'll run through this a couple times because it is a funky new thing. So uh, measure 13. One, two, three. <laughs> Uh, 
And then the last four bars, um, you can play. Or you can do harmonics. Simple as. So let's go ahead and tie this all together, starting at the beginning. Um, and then we will take the repeat. Um, choose whichever fingerings you feel comfortable with. I'm probably just going to stay with the normal ones because, yeah, uh, I'll probably go to the shifted one for those last four bars just because I like how it sounds. So go ahead and join me. One, two, three. <laughs> not really something that you're just gonna hang out on high notes for. However, these do have accompaniments. Um, you can find the CDs, you can find the, the tracks recorded on YouTube and those kind of places super easy. Uh, for piano accompaniment, um, if you have, especially if you have somebody else who is um, well versed in the piano, I would highly recommend getting to play live with them. Um, the songs on recordings never deviate. Nothing ever changes. They play the exact same way every single time. Playing with a live person sitting in the room with you, needing to pick up on their cues and they pick up on your cues is is a thing. It is a type of non-verbal communication that is amazing. Highly recommended. Um, when I have the chance to play with a good pianist, it makes things like this stupid fun. Um, so we're going to go ahead and call it there today, um, just because those tonalizations do bear some practice. Um, they're not the most fun and exciting thing, but they do help you figure out where your instrument is, what your instrument is capable of doing, and kind of keying into the tonality of the instrument. Um, that is going to be a huge thing, especially moving forward, because this, this book is really where things start picking up. Um, a lot of other things that you start running into that you, you need to plan for, you need to prepare for. I mean, that's something that I've even noticed, like working on these lessons, I have to practice more to make sure that I have the alternative fingerings down to make sure that I have, you know, the, the different ways that you can do things in here, ready and prepped to go, which takes a bit. Um, so with that, um, yeah, happy practicing. Uh, work on Bear Seuss, see if you can track down a recording and uh, work with that one. And then we'll catch you next time. Y'all take care. Have a good day.